What's up guys, Yankee here and in this tutorial we are going to see how we can deploy serverless cron functions using data micros. So data micros are serverless computing instances that you can create unlimited number of times. So if you go to data.sh and go to their pricing section, you can see that you get unlimited micros. No pricing, no nothing. Uh, you can deploy your backend APIs. You can even deploy your front ends here. So it's pretty neat. To get started, you need to create an account on data. So go to login page and fill out all the necessary information here. I already have an account, so I'm not going to do it. Once you have signed up for data, next thing you need to do is download the CLI application for your Mac, Linux or Windows computer. And once you have done that, come to your CLI and do data login. So it will give you an URL which you need to follow and sign up so that uh, your data CLI is authenticated to the data server so you can create micros and things like that. So I have already authenticated so not going to do that. So a little intro on what we are going to be building today. So we are going to build a serverless cron function that reminds us to drink water you know every day at 12 p.m. Uh, this is just a simple example that just shows you how to use data micros. Uh, as a cron function and uh, it is nothing special but to get started what you have to do is create a dummy gmail account so if you have a secondary account it's great uh, go to the settings manage your accounts go to security and from here you'll find uh, this option called list secure apps and you need to turn this on so that uh, you know you can use this gmail accounts email and password to actually send email to your primary account so that is all the prerequisite configuration that we need to do. Now let's get to the terminal and start coding our application. So let's get started with our project. I'm going to create a directory called data on my home folder. I'm going to cd into it. And now I'm going to create few files. One is called main.py file. Another is going to be my requirements.txt uh, file. And finally my environment variable file.env. After I have done that, all I need to do now is just data new and it's going to deploy a serverless micro instance on data cloud and it is currently running on Python 3.7. So if you do data new and you run into some errors, uh, make sure you have a file called main.py file. Else what you need to do is data new minus minus Python followed by the name of the application. So that will probably solve your issue. So that was pretty fast. It has, uh, you know, deployed a serverless instance on data cloud and it has given us a URL. Uh, but since we have written nothing here, it's going to return nothing. So let me open up my code editor and go to ENV. I'm going to put in some environment variables here. So uh, the sender email is going to be your secondary emails email address. The sender password is going to be that emails password and receivable email can be a uh, list. Uh, for now, I'm just going to put in a single email. Uh, it is the email that is going to receive uh, the drinking water notification from your cron server. And moving on to requirements and the only requirement we have for this application is python.env. And once that is set, I'm going to move on to main file and I'm going to paste some of the dependencies for this application. So the first one is the OS library to tap into our environment variables since we will be sending emails from our Chrome function. We need SMTP live and we need the data package from where we will be getting the data instance. So we will be using app instance as a decorator to decorate our function notifying it is a cron function. So from .env we are going to yep get load.env and once we have that what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get all the environment variables from my .env file to this file's namespace. So to follow along I'll also be posting the link uh, to this code repository on the description section below. And once we have done that, so I'm getting my sender receiver and uh, sender password here. So now let's move on to the main function here. So again, I'm going to paste a code snippet. And what we are doing here is we are taking the app instance from the data library and we are calling the cron function. So this will signify that whatever function we are writing below it is a cron function. 
So every cron function takes an event argument. So this is given in their documentation. So next, what we are going to do is create an email body for our email. So it will just say, drink water, keep yourself hydrated. And uh, the subject of the email is going to be just plain drink water. And this is our complete email uh, template that we are going to send. Uh, next, what we are going to do is get a instance of Google's SMTP service instance. So that is what we are doing here in line 23. So after that, we will be logging in into the Google's uh, server using sender email and sender password. Uh, this is the very reason why we did, uh, you know, enable less secured apps earlier on. So we can like use that email account to send emails. So finally, we are going to send the email from our sender's account to the receiver account. And after that, we are just going to quit the server and return email body. So that's about it. So this is a plain and simple function. Uh, if you want to do more, I mean, you can just fetch the, you know, cryptocurrency prices every day and send it to you at 9 a.m. or 5 p.m. You can also get weather forecast and things like that uh, with a cron function. But uh, for the sake of the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm just going to send a plain text to my inbox from a cron function. And once we have done that, uh, let me go to the terminal. And now I'm going to deploy my application. Uh, one thing to notice here is in my requirements.txt file, I haven't mentioned data because when you deploy to data micro, uh, the data library is already there. So you do not need to mention it. And with that said, uh, let's go and deploy our application. Uh, for your information, I have already filled out the .env file uh, in my application. So you can go ahead and do that on yours as well. So data new. Uh, it's going to be data deploy and it's going to deploy my function to the data server that we saw earlier. So it's going to take some time because it's also going to install our dependencies from requirements.txt. So our application is deployed with uh, the correct requirements for it. And the next step is very essential because when we deploy our data application or data function, it's not going to take in uh, environment variable by default. So we have to do it by ourselves so for that we need to do data update minus minus env and send our dot env file to the server so once we do that it's going to get the env file and it's going to run so we have created our serverless cron function we have deployed it uh, but now the only thing that remains is to set the cron timer when is this uh, function going to run right uh, so let me pull the docs uh, quickly. So you, we have multiple fields that we need to fill out uh, to, you know, notify when we are going to run this function. So there are placeholder fields like minutes, hours, day of month, month, day of week, and so on. You, so this is like the normal cron syntax. But one thing that you need to be aware of is the time. So whenever we are putting time on our cron function, it needs to be UTC. So it is very, very essential. So right now, let's say it's 3.25 PM in Kathmandu, Nepal. And I want to run my cron function at 3.30 PM, like every day. So if I put 3.30, it's not going to work. So I need a UTC time that translates to my local time. And for that, uh, I have created a simple uh, CLI application called time zone CLI. Uh, you, I'll link that in the description below. So with that, you can just do get UTC and get the UTC time. So I'll give a demo of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, the current time here is 9.36 AM in UTC time and 3.21 PM in my local time. So I'm going to run my function two minutes away from now. So it is going to be 9.38 AM in UTC time. So now I'm going to set my cron function. So it's going to be data cron set. Uh, let's already use the template I have and it says 936. I want to run it at 938, right? So what are the instructions here? So it says uh, the minute, right, uh, which is 38. So it's going to run at 938 AM. Uh, question mark is it does not care what day of the month it is. And it is going to run every month. So we are putting asterisk uh, every day of the week and every year. So that is the instruction we are giving to our cron function. So once we set that cron functions timer, it's going to schedule it and it's going to run. I should be getting our email soon. 
So if you are from other time zones, what you can do is TZ UTC and let's say it's 5.45 p.m. But it's in America and New York, right? So what is the time going to be? So you have to put uh, it's 9.45 p.m. I believe so. Yeah, you have to take the value of 21.45 and put it in your cron timer here. And now I'm in my inbox and just now I received an email from my cron function hosted on data micros. So yeah, it's 3.23 p.m. right now and I just got a reminder to drink water. So like I've said before, this can be prices of crypto, this can be weather notification or whatever you want to do with the data cron function. It's pretty neat. Another cool feature about data platform is that if you go to your dashboard and check out the micros that you have deployed, uh, there is a feature called visor, uh, which is going to show the logs of the function that you have ran. So yeah, we returned, uh, you know, the email body. That's why we are getting this message. So we have returned email body. So uh, that is what is going to be logged in our response. So that is pretty neat uh, and it does not end here. There are other cool things that you can do with data micro as well, uh, like running it from your CLI, right? And for that, what I'm going to do here is uh, use the app decorator again and use the leave run. And what I'm going to do is pass the action called water. So there are two decorators in my serverless function. One is the cron to run the cron sub and another one is called the run. So run decorator is for using your serverless function or it is used for triggering your serverless function from the command line. So using the sub command water, you know what, so what function do you want to run? So I want to run a function that is named water. So that is what we are doing here with this run decorator. So once I have this decorator in place, I again need to deploy my application so that it is aware of the run command that I've just registered. So I'm going to do data deploy again and within few seconds, it's going to be deployed on data cloud. And now I can use data run water and it's going to show me the response drink water, keep yourself hydrated. So that is pretty neat. So you can build whatever you want on the data platform. You are only limited by your imagination and it is completely free. I mean, you can create millions or thousands of data micros and automate all of your tasks and all that good things. So guys, that's it for this video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'll be coming out with more cool contents in the future. Uh, till next time. Bye-bye.